Hey everyone, thanks for joining the uh, episode two of Amazon Moguls. Today I've got Nick, or Nikos, with me today. Um, he's going to tell us all about his uh, Amazon story, how he got started, and you know what, journey, what how his journey's been since he's uh, started Amazon. So if you want to just uh, oh, right. start us off, Nick. Mate, anything, Nick, I'll Nikos, answer to actually. anything. Seriously, I'll answer to absolutely okay, anything. Cool. <laughs> um, so, so you've been doing Amazon now for it like is four, four years, years, yeah. It is four years. I understand correctly. Which is, you know, it's an insane amount of time. And, it's you know, it's back, back in the really day well. where I could do videos also on the side. And um, I mean, I don't know if anyone goes back and look at any of the videos that I've done in the past. Is I literally used to go on a Thursday, go on to do my RA videos and then upload it on a Friday morning kind of thing. Because I just, <laughs> I didn't realize. And I think the, the competition wasn't as much back then which i could get away with doing those ra videos and showcase it to everyone so obviously the playing thing has massively changed um do you want me to so i start with how i got into amazon uh yeah that's it how did you get into amazon yeah absolutely that's a good yeah. place to start isn't it so i know you were a yeah, school so teacher I, first and then you you so how did that go how did that transition go and why did you choose amazon and i saw the year start? start. <laughs> and then uh obviously <laughs> um i had proposed to my girlfriend at the time uh so we were going to get married in the same year so we got married we bought a house and my car broke down the same year simon that's what happened okay and i literally went online and i said ways to make money online i kid you not okay i kid you not it was ways to make money online and thank god I didn't click on one of the crypto videos at the time because that'd have been quite good. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it would have yeah. gone either way, but uh, there was um, some sure. videos that popped up and uh, it was on Amazon. The The woman the woman at the time, I think she was called Mini Millionaire or something like that. Um, I think she's, funny enough, she's switched into doing crypto <laughs> now. Uh, yeah, yeah, funny enough. Oh, but, weird, okay. Yeah, <laughs> she's probably not, me now. But that, that, that's the first person that I saw actually doing Amazon because I've always, I've always been looking and um, enjoying looking at eBay videos. So like Lonnie, I don't know if you got said flips, Lonnie. That's who I watch constantly. I, I still start my morning. I start with watching him on YouTube. Uh, he does this eBay reselling. And it got to the stage where I thought, well, I need to be making more money. The ceiling at the time that I had was, I think I was on 36000 And then my car, I had 500 quid left to pay it off completely. After buying a new car, it was 25K, 500 quid um, left to pay it off uh, completely. A uh, car went and... <laughs> Uh, I would have to pay, I think, 6000 to fix it, uh, It was was quite insane. Uh, so at the time, I just basically went to the guys, just take it, I'll, I'll buy something else, um, just buy exchange it, basically. I just didn't, I don't want, I didn't want to take 6 k to fix that car, and I wouldn't like it either anyways at the end. Um, and I thought, well, I need to, I've, I've got a hole here, I need to dig myself out of it kind of mentality. Uh, I'm not one of those guys that'll sit in wins. And luckily, it was a video on YouTube that say, look at how to sell on Amazon. Now, the problem that it was for me at the time is there wasn't a lot of information out there on how to sell on Amazon. Um, for example, I stopped for a whole month after watching a video because I couldn't figure out for the life of me how much it would cost me to send stuff into Amazon. Um, so obviously now we just know it's three pound fifty, but that information is nowhere. That w yeah. that information four years ago was nowhere at all. So I thought, well, yes, okay, it looks quite good because the American guys were doing it; they were sticking stuff in boxes. But how much? How much is it going to cost me? Yeah, is it like fifty it's, quid to send a box? You know, a big because if you do it as a normal person, send a big heavy box. It's exactly it that's fortune, what I was like, it? So... And then eventually, uh, it popped. Uh, have videos who said, oh. Believe it or not, it's like three pound six. I think it was three pound nineteen even at the time. I thought, well, it's worth really worth trying this. And I actually started uh, with uh, used books, yeah, and used toys. That's how I started. So Skylanders and Disney Infinity figures. That was my thing on Amazon, and and I made a killing out of it. I made an absolute killing on it. And um, I did a whole year of Amazon without Keeper, without Seller Amp, without Bible Pro, just using the Amazon Seller App because. I just, I know, it, and Crazy. I made mistakes. Yeah, I did make mistakes uh, to the point where uh, I got an IP on uh, HP Hewlett Packard. And I was that innocent with Amazon that I just responded by, oh, it's actually just some ink that I had in my garage personal stock. And it, they just removed it. They removed it. <laughs> yeah, and they removed it. I oh, just wow. didn't have a clue. Yeah. I didn't have a clue <laughs> at all. Like, 
Yeah, it's good a, strategy. That. I didn't have a clue of how <laughs> things they can IP you, different brands they can IP you. And then it got to this stage where I was just going doing my RA and I just got deeper and deeper into selling toys um, with it. Um, but yeah, that, that's how I started. Literally, I just watched that video and I thought, well, I can do this. And um, I guess it's very weird because I started straight away. I had a different bank account. I had a different UTR number. I, I kind of did everything right, which... I think a lot of people make a mistake when they start a new venture. They think, let's get straight away. So I didn't mess around the numbers or anything. Um, but yeah, it was. So how did you uh, know that it was legit and not like a scam? Because a lot of people, when they see these things, the I think it's because post, I bought a DVD for think. one quid. Bought a a number, I bought a true. DVD for one quid. The only DVD that I've sold. Yeah, the only DVD that I sold on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so take that and I sold it for one, sold 15. And I guess the reason as to why I didn't, I sent a few things. It's my first box was all used goods, stuff that I bought from charity shops, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, if you're doing Amazon now and you're selling new goods, you shouldn't be buying them from charity shops because that's not yeah. going to be. People do that, though. It's a legit strategy, though. Selling used, used, goods, items, used goods. You know? I don't think you'll um, ever get um, complaints on used goods, would you? I think you're okay uh, with that. Uh, only authenticity yeah. ones potentially like with books and stuff i know people have had that but but yeah it's interesting you started from like used and you you did art retail arbitrage when did you transition to like online arbitrage how do you even discover that a while after you know a while are we talking maybe I, um <laughs> so i i got into so i was selling that then there was a disco group called aftermarket arbitrage just do shoes it was just doing shoes so i signed up for that just to do shoes yeah. um I think I finished after two months with them because I was I just wasn't getting lucky enough to get them shoes because they were just doing shoes at the time. I believe now they also do Amazon, um, but uh, at the time they were just doing like night drops, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I just I wasn't waking up on time to get the stuff, or I just wasn't doing it on enough devices, kind of thing. Um, so I just left that, and at the time, um, I just after that, uh, resale concierge started. Um, so the owners of Resale Concierge reached out to us. I think I only had that around 1,000 subscribers, something like that on YouTube. But I don't think many people at the time in the UK were doing Amazon YouTube, if that makes sense, uh, and sawing the IRA. So yeah. uh, I was with them for, what, a good year and a half. And I think with being part of RC, uh, that's when I thought, well, more people are doing online arbitrage. I should also start doing with a, a bit more OA. Um, I guess it did escalate a bit more with COVID because I physically couldn't go to stores. But I think the first taste of it was yeah. literally being part of um, uh, recent crosshairs. And I guess this is the reason as to whenever I do videos and talk about disco groups, in any disco group that you get to, it doesn't matter which one, you will get value from them uh, kind of thing. And that... Yeah, absolutely. I think disco groups are one of the best ways to learn. I think when you're more experienced, there's a little bit of argument, but when you're starting out, there's so much knowledge in there. People doing the same thing, it's going the same journey as you, and you've got you get ideas about what you can sell, what sites to source from, and you know they put a pings in there and stuff. There's such a good value for money, and most of them are what fifty, sixty quid a month. Yeah, and it's just such a deal. You always that's the thing. You always will do <laughs> easily, <laughs> easily, um, and sometimes it's yeah. many multiples of that um you know so yeah i think Discord and this is why great, even i'm not uh, part of them groups start. anymore like i never will actually say anything bad for another disco group because i, I think you'll always get your money back and honestly you will always get your money back Absolutely. otherwise they wouldn't be existing those the disco groups wouldn't be existing yeah yeah they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but yeah. they are really good and say so take a long time to outgrow uh, the groups and i'm in a bunch of them because you know it just takes one good month ping paid, and then it? yeah that's it i paid for the that's year or, or the month or whatever so you know so oh, yeah, that's that, interesting that's, that's so what yeah, happened. That yeah that's, that's what happened. happened so we got we got with that and then uh covid happened uh <laughs> and i guess i mean did you start with covid or after covid no after covid because uh when i started amazon um it was because my boss wanted me to go back to the office and that's when I like quit the job. Cause I was like, I don't, I, you know, once I've had the taste of working from home, yeah. I was like, no, and I didn't need the job. I enjoyed the job. I didn't need it, but I was like, we just couldn't agree. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. And I'd wanted to leave for years anyway, cause to do my own business. Um, and then I fell into Amazon then. So obviously I wish I'd got into it years before as we all do. For you sure. know? Um, <laughs> 
But, you know, if you can't start yesterday, then the best time to start is today. So, you know, um, but yeah, did you, uh, so what challenges did you face then um, when you sort of, in those first few years, any kind of big challenges at all? It's it's weird. Obviously, I think the the big thing is that I was doing it uh, for two, three years at the side of my job. Um, I don't think if I had kid, if I had my kid at the time, I don't think I'd have done it in honestly. I don't think I would have had the time to do it in such a way. But um, I guess the big thing with anyone that does Amazon, uh, they will soon realize that it doesn't even feel like a job. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a job. Yeah. So really, it was my hobby. What, and, like, and I was telling my friends, like, what's my hobby? My hobby is making money kind of thing. That's what it was. It's just, uh, yeah, side that's what it was, so, yeah. just making money. <laughs> how, how can you complain when you're buying um, a figure for five quid and you can sell it for 20 kind of thing? Um, and all I've got to do is just stick a sticker on it because that's the reality for a lot of things was just stick a sticker on it and send it into Amazon. That's all you've got to do. Yeah. Um, it's kind of magical in a way, isn't it? That you're kind of able to just take these products and just send them in and then yeah. you almost forget about them. And then suddenly they turn into more money. <laughs> now, it's not obviously that easy, guys, but, you know, that's essentially the general gist of it. And obviously when you start scaling. But um, so how long were you part time before you went to full time? Oh, it was was a, good, a couple of years? Good or? three years, you know, I think it was a good three years. I was doing that part time. OK, cool. And what what had to change before you decided, right, I'm going to give uh, this a go full time? I, I would have quit. I would have quit a year before. Uh, I think I would have quit when the little one came. I would have quit. But um, obviously what happens in adult life is <laughs> you've got uh, my wife got on maternity leave. So therefore we knew she wasn't going to get paid that year. And maybe you don't want the stress of like, yes, having a new kid plus also a money stress kind of situation. And um, so what happened is I worked another year and I knew as a teacher, I basically stopped mid July. So I've got a year and I've got a month and a half of extra payment because I get paid all the way to August. And then we start to September. So I've got Q4 ahead of me kind of thing. So I thought, well, I'm not going to struggle for money during Q4. I might at all. And if I do well, um for q4 you really you practically pay all the way till april and then from april surely i can get myself into doing it um i think a big 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 part of of why i was able to drop it off uh because i'm i'm a lunatic like obviously i stopped my job um to do amazon and then i stopped my amazon way of sourcing <laughs> i changed it from raoa to pl so on the first year of doing it so i'm completely in a tick with that okay. um i lost my trail but yeah you still carried on doing yeah it, yeah i still did it yeah so it's not like you, no. you abandoned it you just kind of i keep i keep i okay. keep thinking i'm gonna do full pl and i'm doing it i get really well and i'm then you find something online and you think well it's just 20 quid and waiting to be made there <laughs> it's just you know what i mean it's yeah. just 20 quid that i'm waiting to be made that could pay can't well, turn you down know, that free money, can you? Like, if it's just sat there and it's just like, oh, I just need to put an order in. It, it's as simple as that, it, isn't it? You just put the there. order in and then next thing you know, well, I've just paid for advertising for the day. That's how I see it now. I've just paid for advertising yeah. for my PL. Um, yeah. And those little things add up, 20 quid, 20 quid here. You know, keep doing those. That's what Amazon's made up of, isn't it? All those little things. That's just a scale. So. And that's something that's um, changed. But how so much did you... It. So how much did you need to make then? Because I remember in your old videos, you're like, oh, I need to make Yeah, so 133, 133 quid profit. Yeah, yeah, so you had a goal in mind then. You're like, I need to make that much yeah. per month. And then yeah, it's, I'm happy, it's, it's similar. Basically. 133 quid profit per day. So when I'm sourcing, that's what I was actually sourcing for a long period of time. Um, and I had it as my daily target. Which, when you break it down like that, doesn't sound that much, does it really? When you it really doesn't. It, it really yeah. doesn't. And I, sp- I was speaking yesterday to uh, Ads Resales, and he's all like on two fifty a day, um, and that two fifty a day leads to that what six six thousand a month. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, so it's kind of crazy when you break all these um, things and down. That's how you see it, little wins. I think we had also a discussion with the, the private label what a year ago. We talk about how you could have twenty products making you three hundred quid a month. That's six k. It's when you put yeah. it in low uh, little things, and I mean, I I could have potentially scaled it a lot more because I only started with five hundred quid. Um, apologies if that's a question you've got later on yeah. <laughs> on it. Really, uh, I've watched, good, I've watched right? Adam's uh, podcast. I was like, um, so <laughs> yeah. apologies for that. But I started with five hundred quid. Um, that's all good. That yeah. being said, I have put I think around fifteen k into the business as director's loan uh, since then. Uh, yeah. But I started with a few hundred quid. Uh, I think the first year, I guess that's the other thing too, Simon. The year I, I started it full time, Amazon also offered me 33K 
uh, as a loan um, and it would only cost me 2000 uh, in interest. So basically I thought, well, the business can employ me for a year and only cost the business 2000 That's That's the other That's the other thing as yeah. when I took my decision. Was, yeah, back when interest rates were I know, well, fable, I think they're stopping. I guess, uh, yeah. But still a great opportunity. Though, isn't it? Uh, like, what business can you do? Uh, I mean, there maybe there are one or two out there it, like other than Amazon where you can make money like almost from day one. And then once Amazon see you've got a bit of a history, they're like, oh, do you want 30 it's, grand? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's no questions asked, you say. It's no uh, questions asked, really. Like, yeah, pretty much. Because they know if it's safe for them because they're like, oh, this guy always keeps like 20 grand of inventory in there. Worst case, we can always take it off him, you know, not, you know, but like, it's just crazy when you think about the opportunity with Amazon. I just don't know any other business out there where you can literally from day one pretty much make and money. In so many different ways too. You can also in make. so many different ways. Yeah, honestly, there's so... There are so many ways. I it, I barely scratch the surface on it sometimes. Um, but I've found a way that works for me. But that is definitely not the right way for everyone. There are literally you can do u- new good, use goods, uh, and then like private label. But then within those things, there are so many different strategies to do that. Um, yeah, and that's why you need to get started, I guess. And then you kind of figure out as you go. Um, and obviously, you decided private labels that were time for you. Due to time, mate. That's all it so, was. It wasn't. I didn't want to be fancy. Yeah. I didn't want to be. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of private label people like saying elitist kind of think, oh, I do Amazon the right way. I do private label kind of thing. It wasn't, it is just mm. purely time. That that was the only reason as to why I've done it. Yeah. I, I used to love going in shops and like coming out with what 200 quid profit. There's not a better feeling, was it? But I just yeah. couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Make some good it. videos I, I love as well. It, you know what I mean? <laughs> when you're going out there, you go for it, whatever. You know, people love to see that because that, that's very relatable. It's like, oh, I go to Sainsbury's like once or twice a week and I go shopping. Oh, I can just look around the Lego section. Are there any offers on? So people can definitely relate to that kind of thing. And you can literally walk out. I mean, sometimes it happens to me where I just happen to be going to Sainsbury's and I've spent like 30 quid on groceries and i'm like well i've made 30 quid from buying these lego sets and break even on the, on the shopping. i was ex- <laughs> you know? exactly the same i went out <laughs> with my wife yesterday we had to get a new shoes for the little one because she's starting nursery and uh, there was a game shop well i made 40 quid from that game shop coming in and out nando's across the road i said where you go business yeah. expense <laughs> let's have a meeting let's have a business yeah. meeting let's have a exactly. business meeting <laughs> Hey, so, Paige, I'll see so, you <laughs> let's have a business meeting so that's literally uh straight uh, away and and it will be because i know that i've sold those items it'll be 40 quid profit kind of thing um I, and in the same yeah, way absolutely. i hate the videos where it makes it look too easy that you always get a hit when you go in it's not always a hit that's the thing and yeah, it's true. not always going to be no 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 it can be frustrating at times and obviously we uh, when people do that they show just the 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 good ones you see all these social media things oh, i want you know make 300 pound an hour from going into boots it's like well yeah when you know they're there and stuff fine but you know um so yes yeah, just to be realistic for everyone sometimes when you're doing retail arbitrage yeah. you go in you find nothing so but it's still, it's you know, still that. Um, it's, it is brilliant to go in when you, i mean yeah. what within two weeks you've sold your item and it's in your account kind of thing uh i yeah, mean exactly, if you get q4 yeah. And go buy something at Sainsbury's at twelve o'clock. You probably sold it by six, kind of thing. It's you can't sell it as self fulfilled. Exactly. It's it's insane. Um, so yeah. So that's uh, I'm actually doing a video right now, which is talking about how to start Amazon with like less than a thousand pounds and retail arbitrage. FBM is the main strategy of that. It's a spoiler for everyone. So because like you say, you can turn around your stock so quickly, much quicker than doing that online arbitrage. So what shipping uh, provider are you going to tell them to use harder. for FBM? Uh, the, yeah, that's a good question, actually. Whichever one Amazon suggests, it's probably RM, yeah, I definitely guess. Definitely not every. You don't want to ruin your account <laughs> yeah. for every. No, exactly, yeah. Um, so how was the... Uh, so you did the transition from OA to PL. How has that been it's, going for you? Then? It was very much yeah. a learning experience. Obviously, first of all, you're learning how yeah. to source, um, which is completely different because you're just starting to sell your own products so you're thinking how can i make it unique to the marketplace because you're not reinventing the wheel someone else has done it in the past what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it just a bit better it's hard in the point where now i've got to manage my cash flow because uh, you're making your purchase of effectively what you're doing 500 units so worst case, uh, best case scenario that's a thousand quid that you cannot use say <laughs> like two quid product which i've moved along now to do more expensive products but that's an issue you've got a thousand pounds that you're not able to utilize for you've paid seven days to ten days to get you to get made sometimes another two months for it to come over 
another week for it to get ranked to Amazon and what you're going to get 100 100 sales per day yeah no so that is for me it's become a lot more trying to utilize my cash flow and be a lot smarter with everything um yeah it's a whole nother thing to learn it it really is it really is and in the meantime we're thinking well other people are doing six thousand a month you know i mean i'm only i'm only say i'm I'm doing three four thousand but other people are making six, other people are making 10. Oh, I want, I want a piece of that. I want a piece of that kind of thing. Yeah. And um, we've all seen the people making 20, 30 K a month. But, profit. You know, it's people do it and it's kind of crazy. And people make way more than that as yeah, well. They don't even publish exactly, like, their results. So the sky is the limit on Amazon. It's, it's weird. I'm, I'm very, very happy what I've done yeah. because I'm, I am so, so present with my family. Uh, and Amazon isn't my only income like Touchwood. I started doing YouTube mm. a long time ago, and for some peculiar reason, I've got people are watching still. <laughs> like, uh, well, people like your personality. You put oh, out good info. Stop putting so, subtitles you know. in some of the videos still, but <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> other than that, it's, it's been, it, it really has been amazing. It's been a massive factor for me to mm. quit my job. YouTube has been a massive factor to quit my job. I mean, obviously, yeah. we talk pretty much every day now, uh, and it's this nice to actually see the the progression really and, and talk about it. Uh, really with it, which is kind of mad, but I, I just I, yeah. the the things that I found that during this process is my first proper tax return as a business that ah uh, that stung a lot um, because I think it came after a big VAT payment and then I had that that stung a lot uh, because it was the first year of really doing it properly, but I wasn't paying myself properly. So therefore, I had a crazy amount of profit <laughs> and no outgoings. So that stung an awful lot, really, for yeah. us. I didn't expect it to be that big. Um, and also, I paid it straight away. Uh, but your corporation tax, you don't get a fine on it if you don't pay it. You get interest on it, but you don't get a fine for corporation tax. So you can you declare okay. it, you can do it. I only found out last month, Simon, that, by the way. Um, but you, you don't get a fine on corporation taxes. A lot of people that will a lot of business that postpone it uh, with a VAT you do get a fine um, so I guess that's yeah. the thing I had a transition from doing that to doing VAT um, that's another thing that you've got to learn <laughs> how to budget thing for VAT and how you almost get yeah. the two three weeks before VAT you're thinking oh have I got enough to cover it kind of thing um, and I'll, I mean yeah, you've got the business exactly. will have enough assets to cover it for sure but could you sell it in time to cover the VAT payment that's the thing yeah there's obviously a delay, isn't there, from selling and Amazon payouts and stuff. So, yeah, I think you obviously learn a huge amount when you're starting a business. You know, there's so much to learn from obviously running the business then obviously the accountancy side, HMRC, or if you're on the America IRS kind of stuff, you know, there's a huge amount to learn. But I also feel like, you know, going back to saying you're doing YouTube, Amazon seems to me like a really good gateway to be more entrepreneurial. Like it just seems to for people like light a fire in them and maybe not only do they do Amazon, but then see other opportunities as well that come along. Um, but I feel like Amazon is just like the great little uh, catalyst for that because it's like running a proper business still, but you don't have to do quite as much as a, I guess a normal business. If that makes it's sense. Exactly right. so, and you're surrounding yourself uh, like every day. You're surrounding yourself that are people that are trying to better themselves um if if you surround yeah. yourself with good amazon people not the toxic where like la 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 kind of thing big numbers uh they don't put the cost of goods kind of thing <laughs> so they yeah. look amazing <laughs> so they look amazing <laughs> yeah, exactly um exactly. but if you surround yourself with nice amazon people and not toxic people you're just thinking well they're bettering themselves i can also better myself and and that's that's the reality of what what's exactly. happening really seeing the interview yourself with adam um I'm thinking, well, I could do, I could do more. My little one's going to nursery. I could do a lot more. Um, so maybe I could lift the target, but it's just, it's so. But that's the beauty of it though. You can do as much or as little as you want. As long as you're obviously making enough money to pay for your family and yourself and you're happy, then you can do as much or as little as you want. Like I'm going pretty hardcore right now, but I don't have a family. So, but obviously you want to spend more time because that was one of the things you mentioned in the past was you wanted to spend more time with your, your little one before they go to nursery and school. So well, that's it. It's just like um, a great thing. It was one yeah. of the biggest, like, as, as a teacher, if you, especially if you're a teacher, it's just, you're spending more time with other people's kids than your own. And when, when that hit, yeah. I was like, oh, that's not right. That's not right for me. I mean, it's the same with a normal job. You spend more time with your work yeah. colleagues than you so do with your own family. This, 
this you know, is what I was so weird, so happy it? with Amazon, so proud of myself in regards to what I've done. It, it is a business. Uh, I mean, it got to the stage where now I've got a brand. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's this man. I've got a trademark. Yeah, I've yeah. got a brand. Um, there is no, and you mentioned it in your videos. I mentioned it in my videos too. There is no limit on what you can do with Amazon. Uh, the more you put into it, the more you'll get back. It's as simple as that. Uh, there are billion dollar companies out there that operate on Amazon, you know, do billions in revenue a year. So unless you're, you're you know, well, billions basically is the cap, <laughs> which, yeah, it's going to take a long time to get to. So, you know, but you wouldn't no be doing that at a nine to five. You wouldn't, as that, you wouldn't be in a no, position no, of thinking, absolutely. well, I could have a hundred K this year kind of thing mentality. Yeah. You know, of course you could have a hundred K as a nine to five and no many, a lot of people do it, but how much work you've got to do for that uh and if you make if you do 100k for yourself if you're making 100k for yourself you're making a lot more money for other people if that if that if that makes sense yeah yeah, so if you, if, well, yeah. many multiples so but at the same time entrepreneurship is not for everyone so some people do like that steady paycheck um which i totally understand you obviously have to have the drive and you know put the work in as well like right now, you're obviously quite taking oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> looking after your family and stuff. But obviously, at the beginning, you probably put more work in. So, you know, so, but it's like I say, you can do as much or as little as you want. I, I mean, you know, in a very lucky possibly. position, too. Obviously, being was a math teacher, I could generally get a job tomorrow if I wanted to. I could do tutoring kind of thing. Uh, I mean, I've got, I've still got people asking me to do private tutoring for, for maths and what I could be charging 40, 50 quid uh, for that, for something that's super easy, GCC maths kind of thing. Yeah, many ways. But is that worth it for you now? I though? don't know. Like, I love it. Like, I, honestly, <laughs> I was still thinking maybe I should just do a YouTube channel, just me teaching maths. Because uh, I, I do, I do, I, oh, yeah, I did love it. Yeah. And for me, I loved the interaction with the kids and everything. I, that was the best part of it. What I hated was marking books, and I hated attending meetings for no reason other than just take box exercises. Yeah. I hated having teachers trying to come in and uh, interview my lesson, uh, observe my lesson. Um, saying that, oh, maybe you're not doing enough assessment for learning here, there, but all the kids are happy kind of thing. So that's the kind of things that I hated, all yeah. the nit- nitpicking. The management, I hated management. I'm not a good manager myself, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a good manager. I don't think I could manage anyone. Um, so you can learn, I don't know for sure, but though, this so, is why... Know. You've got virtual assistants, haven't you? Things like that you, so, you manage? So, until you they know, move to Germany yeah. and they're trying to up the price. So, yeah <laughs> so but those are the skills you can learn as you go basically but um but yeah it's the freedom for me that's the big thing for it having the a, thing. a business i guess and obviously the same for you as well and the money's good as well and yeah just going back to what you said earlier to make a hundred thousand a year you just need to make three sorry 274 pounds a day sourcing that's it and it's so achievable and you know and we before we mentioned q4 q4 could be enormous could be like 30 40 percent of your entire year just in like december november december so yeah, I love breaking these numbers down to like, oh, you know, a million pounds is X amount of money per day, or what? Well, hundred thousand. It just makes it, and, you know. And once you start on Amazon, you can actually say, oh, hang on, that's not actually too hard. And it's to, so uh, measurable, isn't it? Hit. Your effort is so so measurable with Amazon. There's so many softwares yeah, out there absolutely. that will tell you exactly <laughs> what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, kind of thing. Um, yeah. Oh, there's so many. So, yeah, it's so, <laughs> yeah, so plenty, plenty of, of ways to do it. Yeah. Uh, it's just you've got to. I think the big one is like take that plunge kind of mentality. That's what it is. Take the plunge. It's, it's like yeah, me starting great, what yeah. four years ago and selling that take that activity <laughs> on Amazon and what's this created. I'm very lucky that I've got the space. Uh, it's not a massive garage. What four yeah. by eight, thirty two square meters, whatever it is. So it's it's not a massive garage, yeah. uh, but I do think it's helped me enough a lot um, because it, my expenses have been very very low for the business kind of mentality i tell you what you're going to be so jealous um myself and the collector have ordered you know the proper print the proper uh packing tape um you know the print okay, out yeah. with the paper ones when the water based the water base okay. yeah we've ordered yeah, those from china yeah, we've yeah. ordered those from yeah, china oh, 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 so oh wow so excited okay. interesting it's kind of got, yeah i'm so excited okay, that's for cool. that that's like to, yeah, to it's literally, you, you press like oh. 50 millimeters oh. and it'll, it'll print it out in 50 millimeters kind of thing I'm just, now, yeah. It's, as again, <laughs> yeah, obviously, we've talked about many times, like little geeky, <laughs> geeky stuff and like toys. That's that's what it is. So, like, yeah, I'm so, I mean, by the time it yeah. comes, it'll be me, but still excited for it. <laughs> kind of mentality. Um, that's really cool. 
Yeah. So, so when you're doing private yeah. you're from China, aren't you? So there is obviously a big lag time. Yeah. So, you know, uh, when we talk about retail, RA of retail arbitrage, OA is on an arbitrage. And I still love it. I still so, love it. It's so, just, yeah. The problem that I've got is I've got to train again myself, um, Simon, because obviously I've gone, my niece was toys. Exhibit A kind yeah. of thing in the background. Um, that's what it was for ages, for ages, for ages. And it seems to be a lot more people are doing toys now, uh, for sure. Yeah. So it's amazing for me still for Q4 because I know what I'm doing inside out. I can go on the websites and know how I can pick something for 15 quid and we'll sell it for 40 kind of thing. But more people are doing that. Um, with EFN jumping in, I've got a lot of people from Germany selling in the UK marketplace and the figures, the figures that I was selling. Okay. Um, so I'm getting quite a lot of big, big sellers that are selling. So I've got to train myself again to find different categories. So what I've been doing at night time is I've been going on Keeper and going to Deal Finder on Keeper and just checking different categories completely and seeing what's selling to, to, to try to change it over. Cause I don't want, I don't want to do just beauty cause yes, a lot of people do jump on beauty uh fairly early on there's still money to be made on beauty for sure there's still money yeah i'm just there is i'm colorblind so i couldn't do a lot of the mascaras i couldn't do a lot of the gray <laughs> like so that can be complicated there's so many shades of certain things and they all look the same as well like some of them are so subtly different no just so subtle i've had vas finding yeah, stuff and i'm like yeah no no this is different and so, no no if you look at this color this is right <laughs> and so there's no way i'll be able to do it yeah. so I've, I've just got to go to different categories obviously i love i love Absolutely. diy so maybe that could be something that i could go down to maybe i could go down to doing kitchen stuff and um, but i do what i've got to do is is train myself and i often um find myself thinking how can i better myself how can i train myself like last and last month, I thought, well, what else can we add? I added bundles. Now I'm thinking, well, we still got the Amex, which we still got no limit on, and, and <laughs> why am I not using that money? You, you know, what I mean, we've not got a limit on it. I thought, well, let's do myself away again. What could I do? Uh, so I'm just going back into starting, and I guess that's the thing. And this is why I started the little group of the 15 people, just starting doing Amazon. I thought. How nice will it be to be surrounded with that buzz of excitement of people just starting on Amazon? You know what I mean? We're selling, we're selling Absolutely. 500, 1,000 a quid a day. And I'm like, mm, yeah, it's not the best day kind of thing. No, I didn't have the best ROI. But <laughs> imagine <laughs> surrounded with people that are just getting yeah. 15, 60 quid a day that's... and they're buzzing about it. That's that's what I want. That's that kind of feeling. Absolutely. So that's why. So you're running a group for brand new Amazon sellers. You've got 15 people for your yeah, sort of yeah. first cohort, I guess you call it, or group. Um, are there any spaces left? Sadly not. <laughs> I mean, so, Sadly so not. never mind. That, uh, but you, well, depending on how well yeah, it goes, maybe we're doing another But I'm so, just very excited you know. because I've I've got some people in <laughs> now. Where they said they've watched they've watched it says they've watched eighty five percent of my videos, but they've never done Amazon. So I'm thinking, I mean, first of all, yeah. well done to them for watching that kind of content. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> second of all, yeah, I'd be amazed because that's what it is. It's just with Amazon, there's so many people that are trying to get paid first and then help you kind of mentality. So that's why I just thought it's just yeah, a massive thing. Yeah. It's a very weird community. It's a very secretive community. And it's, uh, yeah, a lot of people out there just thinking about the money, but not everyone wants to help yeah, people. It's fine. For sure. You know, it's just then, cool. but, I mean, you, um, if you're lucky enough to be watching this, you found two guys that love helping it's, people. It's so, simple you, know, as that. Um, you can always chat to me, you can chat to Nick. You know, um, we're always happy to help. Um, and yeah, like I say, you're doing this group. I might have to do something similar. It's just know, the boss, mate. Imagine, imagine speaking board, to people yeah. that they're just excited. They've just found five and ten quid because there's yeah. a lot of misery with Amazon. There's a lot of whinging. There's a lot of whinging. There is, yeah, absolutely, with price tanking. I guess the downside, yeah. we've obviously talked about the upsides. There are some downsides to Amazon. It's not a perfect world. The admin is a pain in the they, uh, I mean, doing your back returns times. every quarter, which spends a uh, whole day yeah. making sure you've got all yeah. your receipts and everything. Uh, the more, How yeah, do you do it, by the way, Simon? Sometimes. Do you do... I'm really bad. I'm really bad, to be honest. <laughs> um, I should stay on do top of it. for the I last day? Yeah, one go at, at the end. Yeah, yeah. I'm... Pretty much like the last few yeah, days. I start yeah, very good. I start go. good and then I'm just like ordering, ordering, ordering. And like, oh. I just rather focus on making money now and then, and then just leave the admin to later and worry about that later. Even if I get a fine, I'm like, well, I've made more from what I've been doing. Than... But obviously it's not good yeah. to piss off HMRC. You don't want to do that. But And also, if you're new, by the way, you don't have to be right registered. So you no need to worry about that. That's quite a, you know, you have to hit 90,000 yeah. sales a year to get back registered. So they've got a new limit now. So from 85 to 90, which is nice for new people. Um, 
but yeah, it's uh, yeah, there are some downsides. Let's put it like that. It's, it's not, not all rainbows uh, for sure. It's not all rainbows. I've had no, no, but no business is there. Yeah, admins are pain, and then obviously, you know, when you're first starting, you get jump onto products that other people are jumping on, and the price can. But if you wait, up, but, if you do um, wait exactly that's why i keep telling people just be patient i know not everyone has like unlimited funds i guess if you've got a limited amount of money and you bought your stock and you have to wait yeah. three months to sell it's not ideal so that's where you just take that as a lesson you know you make a mistake it's fine it's exactly take it as a lesson and learn from next time so that's why i don't like beauty and, and toys anymore but and talking about efn why don't you sell I... into germany if Germans well, are saying to the UK, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the that? listed number, isn't it? It's the listed number for Germany. You'd have to apply to get your listed number, uh, but then also you've got to. I could never figure out how much I would have to pay for uh, the packaging. Sure. So, and I I sell probably thirty percent of my revenues into Germany right now. So um, I can help you afterwards if you want. But yeah, you create the loser number. You can get the packaging. So you know this is quite advanced stuff, guys. But when you sell into Germany, you have to kind of pay. It's to, disposal. Like, it's, it's yeah, like a deposit on the yeah disposal. You're responsible packaging. for the packaging, so, basically. So say if, yeah. I, if you start that, it's Lego, a big yeah. scam, basically, um, because you're paying this company and they're never going to see this packaging. The packaging yeah, is yeah. going to go into landfill, and you're having to pay them to dispose of it, even though they're never going to see it. Yeah, it's just like an environmental tax. Um, but yeah, so but it's not too difficult, really. But it, you know, it's fairly advanced stuff sending into into Europe. Um, so I've, I've even toyed for the idea. I've toyed for the idea yeah. of. Doing pan panic you too, uh, you know what I mean. Where I've thought yeah, that idea too. Yeah. Just... So Amazon have so many different systems and things in place to help sellers. It's actually a little bit overwhelming at times, but there's so many systems like selling to Europe. There's EFN, which is where it comes from, a UK warehouse and send sends to the customer in Germany. Then you've got Pan EU, where you actually keep your stock in Germany, um, but then you have to register for a German yeah. VAT number. Uh, but Amazon will help you with that as well. And even do the filings for you. So this is, you know, all these opportunities. So yeah, Amazon's a global business, by the way, guys. So you don't just have to sell into the UK. You can do it into America, Germany, anywhere in Europe. And there's even Australia and Japan. I don't think many people sell into that from yeah. the UK, but who knows? Like maybe there's something you can pop down to Marks and Spencer's, like some chocolates or something that people in Japan love. And you can do a market. No, I don't no, know. It's just, guessing, you know, but you, know, you don't know, do you? Like, so many businesses, um, so many businesses, so different ways to make yeah. money with it. Really, um, it's just obviously. I think I was looking at the time, and then I thought, well, I'm doing PL here, Nick. Just one thing at a time, because I'm, I'm like an octopus, anyways, already doing like a million different things. Uh, but I just. Yeah. I thought I'd do it properly, and I've been really good. I've run some really nice products through the PL, and uh, now I've said to myself, well, I've got a massive order coming for, like, I think it's 7,000 um, quid order that arriving. I thought, well, that's arriving in May, so I've got this time to do some other stuff, and that's why I'm trying bundles. This is why I'm trying away. Maybe after this call, I'll start doing Germany kind of thing. So um, it's just really? it's so many different ways of doing it. All you got to do is just start. Yeah actually a little bit overwhelming at times that's why you just got to try and focus on one thing at a time but yeah it's uh there is so much opportunity there. and if, you, if you'd it's, asked me if you'd asked me a, now that i've done pl2 i would still recommend to people start with the raoa i'd still recommend because you need to know how the system yeah, works you 100%. need to be able to tell the chinese supplier what to do with them labels you know what i mean you need to be able to explain what yeah. their asian labels are and stuff like because some of them have never done it before so you've got to explain it and if you absolutely yeah it's like a, in the previous podcast we did with adam you know he you know we're talking about how people go jump straight into wholesale and i think it's just crazy i think yeah you've got to do oara to begin with get your van number and then do wholesale i think i think jumping into wholesale immediately off the bat or private label is just a recipe for disaster because you don't even know how to read the keeper charts the keepers a bit of software for amazon it shows you the price history um you don't know how it's a good product you don't even know if you can sell it on Amazon, so you could make a big order from China for five thousand units, or whatever, and find out. Oh no, yeah, that's, I'm not, you can't sell that. I'm not. I've not got the same so, documentation or something like that. So that's something that. I, yeah, one exactly. of the first things I asked. So about. it's, I think it's always good to have this dream of doing private label if that's something you want to do. But I think definitely just get your feet. And it's not. Way, RA, you're not going to be a millionaire first, with private you know, label in the first year. It might be three, four, the year three or year four. You yeah. will be. But even no matter what you do with Amazon, unless you're starting with like a million pounds and you have a killer 
place where you can order stuff from that sells a lot on Amazon. Yeah. It's going to be a slow burner. It's not a quick money. Like, you know, I'm making decent money now, but it's taken me two years of living and breathing Amazon. It's yeah. taken you four years, you know, or, or how long it took to get to the point where you're making like a, a good living. So it's not a quick business. It's not get rich quick guys at all. Um, it's uh, it does take time and effort, but it lets you, the main thing is you can make money right away. If you start any other business, you're probably going to lose money for a long time before you can actually get, you know, get some money in. Whereas Amazon from almost day one. You can, and can just to, money, so to put, because kind of I think a lot of people just start Amazon and straight away they're thinking, well, I'm going to get a prep center, where I'm going to get a warehouse kind of thing. Uh, you don't need to go crazy. You, you really don't need to go crazy, do you? No, absolutely not. If you've got a room, like I've got my office here, if you've got anything like that, you can do, yeah. It's always good to learn it yourself first and then outsource yeah. the prep center or whatever. Um, you know, um, yeah, I'm always a big, yeah advocate of learning first do it yourself first learn how to do it and same with virtual assistants by the way guys i know a lot of people ask me oh should i get a virtual assistant and they can't even source themselves I know. Like, it's... No. <laughs> if you can't teach someone how to sort if you don't know how to source yourself how are you going to teach someone and they're just going to be wasting 400 money. quid yeah so 400 quid a month no... train. yeah um there's no like magic bullet with amazon and you can't just pass the buck on to someone else unless you're lucky enough to get one that's already knows what they're doing um yeah, so it's still hard work, but very worthwhile, and you can make some good money. It's nice because it, it's so it's so miserable, yeah, it's isn't it? Good. It's just so miserable. Uh, the more effort you do, so like obviously, if you're smashing it, it's if you, you the more you work, the more you get out of it. You know what I mean? It's just it's as simple as yeah. that. That's what it comes to it. Yeah, same with anything same. in life, isn't it? Really. So I think a lot of people are looking for get rich. It's quick, not going to happen. Which, you know, maybe look at crypto. But <laughs> well, know, I did a bit of NFTs. I did a bit of NFTs. I did crypto. I did NFTs, mate. No. <laughs> oh yeah, oh. I did, yeah, NFTs as well. So been through all that kind of thing. But um, so have you got any uh, so any big mistakes you made? Like anything that pops into your head? Like a uh, this is the biggest mistake I made in. I did wholesale your toys. Journey. <laughs> that was okay. So you jumped into wholesale. What? How long? How far into your journey? Uh, you I think it was. Sorry, I'm trying to. I'm sorry, I thought somebody was at the door there. Uh, I did. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think it was year two. I did wholesale toys a year two. Okay. A massive order of a hundred units. A uh, hundred units at thirteen quid, something like that. So it's not. It's not crazy, but it's still a massive order. Uh, then I got an email the week after. Oh, by the way, the price of the good is half price now. All oh, right. Yeah. When That's am I going to make six and a half? Uh, but luckily, I was able to break even because I was doing the EFN program, uh, and people, I was still able to make okay. break even. You, but seriously, you should have seen it as soon as that email went out. The price for that just went down. That's, I mean, that's I just stopped doing wholesale toys uh, for a moment. I got a few successes, but nothing worth it. And maybe it was just the wrong wholesale to get into. Uh, but uh, I'm. Yeah bit naughty of them isn't it that's bad business practice and look you've ordered once and, it's, it's, it's a, and i got back to so. him i did go back to him and says oh we are really sorry but there's nothing we can do we didn't know that the supplier is going to do that for us kind of thing i was like yeah yeah right kind of mentality but it, it just stung uh mistakes really i've done <sighs> so, i mean i'm very lucky like with it I, no, no major like nothing, that, nothing that so. creeps out and says, wow. I think the biggest mistake that I've done is probably the last year is how I tackle private label the same way I did IRA OA, which I, I went wide because uh, I've talked many okay. times how and it's still probably a small-minded way of doing IRA and OA. I just do three units of an item at a time. It sells, that's okay, and go on, go on because then that's me eliminating the tanking. That's, that's my copper mechanism through it. Uh, you go heavy because you read a graph and you're thinking, well, I can buy out the market. And that's what people do. But I tackled PL with the same point of like, let's launch products, let's keep launching, keep launching. So I ended up doing PL for like three months and I had 25 products. You know what I mean? It's just, I had so, my eyes were just going yeah. left, right and center. Um, 25 products yeah. means 250 quid of advertising a day. Minimum, minimum. Yeah. You're thinking you've got, you've got yeah. 10 quid, 10 quid for 25 products. And, Maybe the products are not as a good as sellers. Maybe my margin was small. I was ordering, I was ordering PL products with that thinking margin. Yeah, uh, so everything looked okay, but margin was. And it's funny, cause I go back and look at my sourcing. Uh, I put my items in, put my numbers in. Now, now I'm sourcing with a 30, 30 to forty percent margin. 
when I put my numbers in, it worked at 9% margin. How am I going to make any profit at 9% margin with, with advertising, yeah. you know, on top? So, Absolutely. yeah, so that's that. I think that so, I think that was a problem. My biggest mistake is it's a completely different board game. So just be focused then, I guess, yeah. is what you're saying on your... Do, do one a quarter, do one a quarter. And learn how it works, the advertising. Because obviously when you're doing OARA, you don't have to do much yeah. apart from buy the product, send it in. With private labor, you've got to create the listing, get the images, get the images edited, a video maybe. Um, what else? Like packaging, So many branding, different things. Just, but I think that's marks, I just went wide. Advertising, just thought, PPC. A million, a million variations. Let's get this <laughs> Yeah. But you know what? When it comes to OARA, I actually be, like being laser focused now. So it's interesting. When I started, I was very wide um, in terms of all, what I went for, all categories everywhere. And I still buy some, yeah. some free money there. I still order it. But I'm kind of laser focused now where I am in my category. But yeah, it's interesting. And you've got any sort of advice for new sellers? Anyone who wants to get right. into Amazon? I mean, you've got 15 students right now. So yeah, no, right. Out, the, but... the, the biggest one is, okay, and it sounds very stupid, is just do everything on a different bank account. I do everything. It sounds very like, oh, it's, but do do everything in a different yeah. bank account. Uh, I would say set a target for yourself uh, from what profit you want each week, what will profit you want each month kind of mentality. And then I think everything else will yeah. come because you've got to be sourcing according to that target. Uh, spend time. Um, Keeper is your friend, of course. Keeper is your friend. Uh, spend some time looking at graphs, thinking what he's talking about graphs. What, what the heck? What is? I mean, is that? You know, what I mean, they've got to understand how if the graph is going like this, if a price is going like this, and the amount of people selling is going up, uh, so, <laughs> it is wrong, kind of thing. You know, what I mean, it's going to take a better yeah. time to recover. Yeah, absolutely. So that's something that I would uh, do is ask questions ask questions kind of thing you can ask questions join groups ask questions um yeah it's just don't rush to quit your job i would say don't rush to quit your job because it'd be imagine if you've got to go back to a nine to five after tasting freedom <laughs> you know yeah, I mean, it's exactly, gonna be yeah. it's gonna be horrendous <laughs> after tasting the freedom I'd have, to, I'd have to get paid a lot of oh, money yeah. to go back to a job, like a I'm, serious I'm never, amount of money. I'm never going back. Be, I'm never going yeah. back. Uh, no. Start selling. Yeah. Not unless I have to, of course. But. <laughs> don't think so, man. Don't. Yeah. I, I, yeah. To, sat, to, to be sat for a meeting that I've not planned and listening to someone else mm. talk about something uh, or some, oh, here's my new latest idea kind of thing. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, exactly. Not yeah, yeah no. it's, it's, uh, don't rush it's, it. Uh, uh, don't rush to quit your job. I would say do it on the side uh, for a couple of months and then thinking, I mean, unless you have got, unless you you had a perfect scenario, didn't you, where you had uh, some money on the side, you just after COVID, they didn't want, you didn't want to go back in. You're thinking, well, I can do it. You, you're quite technical too. Uh, so for you, it was a perfect storm. Kind of, you, you didn't have anyone, any dependents kind of thing. So you, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was good for me, and I like my back. So, so that is, that is that's how last I minute kind of thrive. So I was like, yeah, that's how, yeah. I had no job. I had no. Oh, well, I, I had savings, yeah. but I had no real income. I had an Airbnb, but we won't count that. That's how you remember um, your first name, you know. Honestly, but, yeah. that's your first name on Discord. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, originally I was your yeah, Airbnb mogul. Um, that's what my friends always called me. So and I was like, I'm gonna transition that to FBA now. But, um, but yeah, it's hard to scale an Airbnb business when each property you buy costs 250, 300 grand, you know, that's why I moved into, you know, it's a great business model, but unless you're minted. Um, and it's weird because like, I'm always that, thinking, I, I get into property after this, I get into property after this, but <laughs> you're thinking you've got people that are renting properties for 300 quid a month, 30, uh, oh, 300 quid is too cheap. So say 500, yeah, yeah. say <laughs> yeah, five, five, 600, quid, is... say five, 600 quid, say 500, 600 quid. You've got to deal Even with that, the tenant. Yes, yeah. You've got to deal with the tenant. You've got all yeah. X, Y, Z when that could be two pro two items like yourself per month kind of thing uh, passively. So yeah, it, it's a weird one. It's such a weird one. Like I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to be yeah. doing in ten years. It's I've not got a clue what I'm going to be doing in ten years. I think property. I always feel like property is some something you get into once you've got money and you want to diversify yeah. out. You don't. And obviously there are people out there that do this, but you don't get rich from the property or do the property to get rich. I always think, unless you're like a property developer or something, it's very hard to like get wealthy from like renting properties unless you're looking at very yeah. vast timescales and you're able to get cheap mortgages and stuff and things like that. So I always feel like once you've got money, let's say you have 200 grand spare or whatever, you're like, oh, 
I don't want to put them into Amazon. I want to diversify out just in case Amazon shut your account down or whatever. You know, They're a lot nicer now. The the, by the way, guys, if you're watching this, Amazon are a lot nicer. Yeah. It used to be oh, oh, yeah. two, yeah. three years ago, this. guys, you used to do one A to Z claim. That's it. Your account's gone, basically. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? You used to go, oh, it was insane. Yeah, it's crazy. It was absolutely insane. It used to be, it's never been so a better time to get into Amazon, you know. They're much nicer now. There's so many so resources much information, out there so much uh, to learn. Um, and yeah, my advice from you guys would be just join a community like on Discord. Check links in the description if you want, like or whatever. It's, you know, no, you're moving forward. Like um, I mean, me having a conversation with you, and then just it's, chatting to say exactly chatting to like-minded people. You're going to get loads of information. It's very hard to learn by yourself. So what, what, um, what? You know, it can be overwhelming. So. Um, but yeah, awesome. That was a great interview. Where can people find so, you online? So, no longer part-time thrifter. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I always think of you still as that, though. I still search that. It's, it, it's <laughs> Nikos Marcos on everything. TikTok, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm doing a push on YouTube. I want to get 8K in April. So, if you subscribe, that'd be amazing. You're going to get 10K well, soon. I, I, yeah, I, I was 3K it. in yeah. January. It is insane. Absolutely mad. It is mad. Yeah. And you've almost doubled it, it is, since, yeah, since then, haven't you? So. Um, which is what are you on seven yeah seven point actually around? seven one five seven one five yeah i'll get there okay cool i'll get there which is insane so i yeah, enjoy it i enjoy it so, too, there's not that many... i really enjoyed it. i made that video the other day about that and all the different things about you being an amazon seller and selling that i enjoyed doing that video you only got 40 views but i enjoyed making that video kind of thing yeah. stuff yeah no still yeah but people interesting video that people will yeah. go back to in the future because i remember you know i've watched some of your videos when i went to transition from sole trailers limited i use your tutorial video to learn how to do that so uh, that video will always always be there for people that want to do the same thing so um but yeah thanks, thanks very much for thanks coming for on anyway us. really appreciate it. hopefully people enjoyed this and yeah go and reach out to nick on his youtube channel at nikos marco and yeah you can uh, maybe he'll be doing another cohort soon who knows for anyone who wants to get into amazon no promises <laughs> <Well>, yes <laughs> But, um, but yeah, oh, that's awesome. Man. Right. Thanks. And uh, we'll see you guys Cheers. in the next episode. Cheers.